So in the previous video, we were introduced to the fact that metaphors are a powerful way to communicate climate change. In this video, we're going to focus on one of those metaphors in particular, the heat trapping blanket or HTB metaphor. And we'll talk about how to use this particular metaphor when you're communicating to other people about climate change. So this explanatory metaphor, again, is called heat trapping blanket. And what it is, is it's a metaphor for the basic mechanism of climate change. In this image right here, this red part is that blanket that's trapping that heat. So it's being bounced around here, around the earth, and not being released back out there. And so when you're using this metaphor, the story that you're telling, and again, the story is important, right? If you think back to the very beginning of the module where I use that example of Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, where she painted this very elaborate descriptive picture, you're really telling a story here that's going to get people to engage with you more. But the story that you're telling is that when we burn fossil fuels for energy, we add more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And that buildup acts like a blanket that traps heat around the world, which disrupts the climate. And so when you're using this metaphor, this metaphor is effective because what it's doing is strategically redirecting people away from some common misconceptions and from some common patterns of thinking that aren't productive for the conversation. So some of those patterns that we're directing away from are that change is natural. So this idea that, oh, the climate has already always changed. This is no different. Um, a lot of people have the misconception that climate change is about a hole in the ozone layer. That's also not the case. This metaphor helps to direct away from the thought that nature will fix itself and that we don't have to do anything. That nature works in cycles, which is again related to this change is natural. And that the solution is recycling. So we'll talk about in a little bit, the solution actually is something different. So in this particular heat trapping blanket metaphor, we are redirecting people away from that thinking to have a more productive conversation. And so when you're using this heat trapping blanket metaphor, you wanna touch on several key points. The first thing you wanna do is start with fossil fuels as the underlying cause. So this is, again is an image of these CO2 emissions being emitted by the factory industry and transportation. were those two main causes we saw of those emissions. Let's see if I can draw a car. Nope, that looks like a turtle. <laughs> okay, that's a car. So industry and transportation are some of the main causes of these fossil fuel emissions. And the second thing you wanna do when you're using this metaphor is then introduce this analogy of the blanket. And a blanket is something that everyone's familiar with. And so you can use that analogy to explain that those gases, carbon dioxide that are being emitted are creating a really thick blanket around the earth that are trapping heat in the atmosphere. So we're using that analogy, something that people can relate to, to convey this idea that we're trapping heat and it's making the earth warmer. We then want to explicitly state that this warming of the earth is a problem. So again, when we thought about some of those misconceptions people have, some people might think, oh, well, this has always happened. It always happens in cycles. It's not a big deal. This warming of the earth, that thicker blanket caused by higher heat trapping gas emissions like carbon dioxide, this is a problem. And so you can talk about some of the potential ways that people are being affected by this. And here I think it's beneficial to consider who your audience is and whether they might be more interested in the effects on human health or on environment. And of course, all of these things are being affected, but when you're trying to have a productive conversation with someone, you wanna tell a story that they're going to relate to. And so it might make sense for you to consider what things they think are most important. If you want to focus on 
human health impacts, you might focus on something like increased disease transmission, which we've talked about before. This is a graph showing the disease danger day. This is in San Francisco. This is local. This is the risk of disease transmission by mosquitoes. Here on the y-axis is the risk, and on the x-axis is the year. You can see there's this general trend here of increasing where we have 47 more days in 2017 where there is a danger of transmitting mosquito diseases than in the past. That again is because of this climate change under warmer temperatures, we see higher transmission of diseases. Uh, mosquitoes aren't the only one. Also uh, dengue fever, a lot of cholera, so something that maybe you saw when you played organ trail, that's also something that's being more transmitted now. So increased disease transmission is one way that climate change is a problem and is affecting communities. Crop loss. So climate change is also affecting our food sources. So they've done studies to show that even one day above 100 degrees Fahrenheit is enough to reduce crop yields by 5%. And so if you think about just one day, and here in Sacramento especially, we have so many days that are over 100 degrees, but if the crops that you have are sensitive to heat and they can't tolerate those warmer temperatures, this heat trapping blanket where we're making the earth warmer is causing problems for food as well. Or if maybe your particular audience member or your the person that you're talking to is more interested or more concerned about the environmental impacts, you can also talk about how the warming of the earth is causing a problem for the oceans or for other species. We talked about before amphibians and reptiles are some of the most impacted. So here in this picture what I'm showing is an example of how this warming earth is affecting the oceans and one of the things you may have heard of is that the warmer temperatures are killing coral reefs. So this is causing something called coral bleaching. So on the left hand side we have a healthy coral reef. So this was in 2005 before a big heat wave for instance. On the right hand side in 2010 we see a lot of these white patches of coral. Those corals are bleached. So normally corals have these beneficial symbiotic organisms that live inside them, when they get really hot they actually kick out those organisms and when they do that they become white and bleached so that's actually an indicative of a dying coral. And this is so important because if we look on the left we have a really healthy community and the corals form the base for that ecosystem. So they provide habitat for a bunch of fish, they provide food, shelter, and you have a bleached coral reef when the coral isn't alive anymore, you lose all that structure. So we don't have any fish anymore on this side. So that's another thing you can talk about when you're stating that the warming of the earth is a problem. It's a problem not only for human impacts on our health and on our food sources, but also on the environment. And then the last part, and this is again really important because we don't want to leave people thinking that they're helpless, that there's nothing that can be done. The last thing we want to do when using this metaphor is to explain that the solution is to reduce emissions of our heat trapping gases. And we'll have a whole video in a little bit about different possible solutions to talk about and how to talk about solutions. But one of the main solutions that will help us reduce those emissions of CO2 is something like shifting to sustainable energy solutions like wind power, for instance. So here this is an image of a wind farm, which is a sustainable alternative to burning those fossil fuels that we showed before. So again, when you're ending using that metaphor, you always want to make sure you talk about what a possible solution is to this problem. So in the next couple of slides, I'll show an example of this in a fun cartoon form. So if you were to convey this metaphor to someone else, first you would want to start by talking about fossil, fuel, fossil fuels, right? So you would want to say that burning fossil fuels like coal and gas releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So there's a car, looks like a car, not a turtle like mine did. But again, we're starting with the fact that fossil fuels are being burned, that's releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
The second thing we want to do here is explain that as that carbon dioxide builds up, it creates this blanket around the Earth. So in this cartoon, they use the term gassy blanket. I don't know if you would want to use that term per se. Seems a little odd to me, but the idea is the same, that this high emissions of carbon dioxide is creating this blanket around the Earth. And then you would want to convey that this blanket is thicker as more CO2 is being produced and that thick blanket traps heat around the earth and so it's making the earth warmer. And that's a problem, so all that trapped heat warms up the ocean, so this particular example is focusing on the impact on the oceans. You could talk about coral bleaching, for instance, as one possible problem. You could also talk about problems not related to oceans, like human health or other species that are being affected on land. So if we were to end there, go ahead and think on your own what's missing. So if you think about what was shown when we first talked about how to use this metaphor, what's missing from the cartoon here? So hopefully you realize that in the cartoon, they never talked about a solution for the problem. Remember, we always want to end with a solution so we can be productive in our conversations and not end up having people think they're helpless or hopeless. And so in this scenario, what is missing is we would want to end this conversation, this interaction with someone as we're using this heat trapping blanket metaphor, we would want to end by saying that the solution to this problem is by reducing emissions. And so that's really the way that we're going to be able to solve this problem together.